I used to work as a hotel housekeeper at the Fianna Resort slash hotel in South Miami when I was in my mid-twenties. It is a very large and luxurious five-star hotel and we'd oftentimes have to get there at really early hours in the morning to help the additional staff set up for the day. This included washing sheets and gathering all of the hotel supplies for rooms that were just checked out of. If a room had been checked out of, we'd have to go to that room and get everything replaced and ready again for the next guest. It wasn't too much of a hassle, but it was definitely time consuming, especially if you didn't know what you were doing. One day, one of the rooms on the second floor had just been checked out of, and I grabbed the new sheets and blankets and cleaning supplies and hurry over to the room. I start making the beds while replacing the sheets and even had to clean up trash on the side of the beds as people clearly can't pick up after themselves. Once I was done, I make my way over to the bathroom to replace the toiletries and see a man I had never seen before standing by the shower curtain. To give you a better description, he looked to be in his mid-forties and had long greasy hair and I could definitely smell the marijuana on him. He was most certainly not the type of person to belong in a hotel like this, and I was curious as to how he even got in here, as there was no reason for someone to be in here other than me. Being a bit startled, I asked him politely if he needed any help and as to why he was in here, but all I got in response was utter silence. I wanted to tell him to leave, however the housekeeping department stated that we couldn't legally make a guest leave. He then looked up at me and told me that he just wanted to talk to someone. I respectively told him that I couldn't and that I had a lot of work to get done. It was at this point when I noticed that he had his right arm behind his back, indicating that he was indeed hiding something. That was my cue to get out of that room, because whatever he was hiding behind his back obviously wasn't good. I told him it was nice to meet him, and left the room right then and there to call security. Within minutes, hotel security came with the police, and what they found chilled me to the bone. Police had found him still inside of the bathroom, with a large knife, which was probably what he was hiding behind his back. It turns out that this man was wanted for sexual assault and murder. He had been in and out of jail three times for battery, but was apparently released on, quote, good behavior. He would sneak into apartments and hotels and try and lure his victims into doing God knows what. His victims were two older women and one other hotel maid. He was arrested, and I then quit my job the very next day. No more cleaning duties for me. In fact, from that day forward, I still have a major fear of hotel rooms and will never even stay at one when someone was there with me. I strongly believe that there is a special place in hell for that man. This happened around 11 years ago when I was around 20 years old. I attended college in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and at the time my family was financially unstable, which made us all fall behind on bills. Because of this, I ended up getting a job as a hotel receptionist to keep up with our late payments. The job itself was easy enough, but having guests constantly check in and out was more of a pain than you would think. My managers, being the jerks that they were, gave me a week of late night shifts knowing that I had an early morning class the next day. I was annoyed, but whatever. One day, 
I was working during the night as usual, sitting on my desk playing Sudoku when the phone rang from a room. I pick up and say, Front desk, how can I assist you? Much to my surprise, there was no response on the other end of the phone. So I hang up and not even five seconds later the phone rings yet again. I say hello once again and, as expected, there was no response. I explain to one of my managers that I guess kept on calling the front desk for no apparent reason and he asks me what room it was. I tell him the room number and he gets this confused look on his face. He went on to explain that that room had been closed off for renovation and that nobody should have been in there under any circumstances. I double check to confirm that that was indeed the room and my manager gets his keys and we go up to the elevator to the third floor of the hotel. With my manager having somewhat of a temper, he knocks on the door angrily and tells whoever was in there to get out. There was no reply and my manager unlocks the door and we step inside. The very second we did, we were both met with a blast of cold air. In fact, the whole room was freezing, which was weird considering that it was the summer and the thermostat read 75. He turns on his flashlight and tells me to look around for anyone who might have been hiding anywhere. I checked under the beds, in the bathroom, and even went as far as checking in one of the small closets, but I didn't find anyone. Now this is the part where shit really starts to go down. As we were leaving the room, I take one glance towards the bathroom and what I saw still terrifies me till this day. Standing in the mirror was what I could only describe as a very tall black humanoid figure. Whatever it was had to be at least 8 feet tall, but I couldn't be sure as the lights were still off. I didn't tell my manager about it, fearing that he'd think I'm crazy or joking around where it could possibly lead to losing my job. I'm convinced that what I saw that day was completely paranormal. This took place back in 2013 when my brother and I were around 8. My family and I live in Atlanta and we'd occasionally drive to Orlando to go to Disney World. It was a very long and boring trip there, but we make it to the hotel we'd be staying at which wasn't too far from the theme park. We end up arriving to the hotel and after we all check in, my dad takes me and my brother down to the pool to go swimming as we had nothing else to do. The pool they had was massive and the only people that were there were us three and a man sunbathing in one of the chairs. My dad kept a close eye on us kids and my brother and I start to play games in the pool when I noticed that the man sitting in the chair was looking at me. He wasn't staring, but he gave off a very unsettling vibe that made me feel extremely uncomfortable. He was a middle-aged man that looked to be in his 50s with a long gray beard and a fat beard gut. I tried my absolute best to avoid making eye contact with him, but whenever I did, I still found him looking at me. I could also tell that my brother started to feel uncomfortable as well, and my dad then tells us that it's time to go. Needless to say, we get out of the pool and head to the dining area of the hotel where they were serving lunch. As I'm standing in line with my brother, my dad tells us to wait in line while he went to go get my mom. We stay in line for a good two minutes when I feel a tap on my shoulder. I look behind me and see the same man from the pool. He looked down at me 
and said something that still sticks with me till this very day. I like the way your hair smells, sweetie. Do you want to come with me? I was utterly terrified at this point, and that's when somebody nearby hears him and tackles the man to the ground. The guy who tackled the man threw some hard punches to the man's face, and when hotel security and police finally came, they arrested the man who tried to kidnap me. The whole ordeal captured everyone's attention in the hotel lobby. My parents talked with the police, and we found some very disturbing news I didn't know. Apparently, this guy was a registered sex offender and was known to do stuff like this. He had attempted to kidnap several children but was never successful and never caught. It still terrifies me, knowing as to what could have happened if I did end up deciding to go with him. So, this is a story that happened to my mom's friend in Korea about 10 years ago. Every time I hear this story, I still get the chills. My mom's friend was staying in a hotel with her daughter in Seoul, South Korea. She was a stay-at-home mother and her husband worked during the days. One day, she was coming back to her room from running errands with her daughter and got onto the elevator in her building. When she got on, she noticed that there was a man wearing a cap and a yellow raincoat, and he kept his head low so that she couldn't really see his face. Right then and there, she immediately felt really uneasy, and she made her daughter stand to her side furthest away from the man. What made her feel even more uncomfortable was that when she pressed the button to her floor, there was no other lit number. On top of that, she also noticed that he was carrying something wrapped inside newspaper close to his side. Things started to click in my mom's friend's head, and she started to panic and decided to take out her cell phone and pretend she was calling her husband, who was obviously really not there and somewhere else. She started saying things like, Oh, I'm on the elevator and about to get off. Can you please get the door for me? and making it seem like her husband was there. When the elevator did reach her floor, she quickly got off and grabbed her daughter and started to walk as fast as she could to her room. She then noticed that the man also got off on her floor and was slowly following her down the hallway. When my mom's friend got to her door, she started banging on it and shouting, Hey honey, I'm here please open the door, and kind of pretended like he was coming to answer the door. Upon seeing this, the man in the yellow raincoat started to walk back away toward the elevator. When he seemed to be far away enough, my mom's friend quickly picked up her daughter and slid open her door's passcode thinking and started to frantically punch in the key code. But the problem was that the buttons would make sounds, so the man knew that no one was going to answer the door for her, and he turned around and started to run back towards her. My mom's friend at this point was practically screaming, and when she finally got her door open, the first thing she did was throw her daughter in through the door. When she got in herself, she saw that the man was pretty much inches from the door, but she managed to shut it and lock it before he could wedge his hand or a weapon into the door. Afterwards, she was looking through the door's peephole. She then saw that the man was walking away back towards the elevator very casually if nothing ever happened. Several months later, my mom's friend was watching the news and there was a coverage on the capture of a serial killer named Yu Young Cho who used to kill a lot of prostitutes. She told my mom that she could never forget the dread she felt when she saw the two familiar yellow raincoat and hat that he was wearing when apprehended. <laughs> 